I never saw my friend again. And this is that story. So it was many years ago, and I was walking my dog in Brooklyn one night, a uh, little uh, tiny white Jack Russell Chihuahua. And it was very, very hot, and I just wanted to go home, and I was saying, make poopy, make poopy. I have no empirical evidence that this creates poop, but it was what I was doing. And he had finally pooped, and we were gonna go back home. And if you've ever lived in New York, the summer can be very sultry and disgusting, and I just wanted to get inside when I see this guy walking towards us down the street with a little dog on a leash. My little dog, Charlie, gets very excited, like wagging, getting down on the ground. The other dog's excited. Now I have to talk to this total and complete stranger uh, about nonsense because we have two animals at the ends of ropes that want to sniff each other's butts. We start talking, just sort of talking about the weather, and he says, oh, I was just in Texas. I was like, oh, I'm from Texas. And he was like, oh, what part? And I was like, San Antonio. He was like, I was right neither. We had so much great Mexican food. Oh, I miss the Mexican food. Don't you love the guacamole? Man, I love the guacamole. They don't know how to do guacamole here. Am I right? We're just like going back and forth. It's been like half an hour. Our dogs are just sort of like chilling next to each other, like checking out the block. At one point, I find I tell him, I'm like, hey, I live right here, why don't we hang out sometime? And he says, oh, well, um, and there's like a, a weird pause, like I don't know why he's not saying yes, let's do that. And he's like, well, I'm, um, I'm moving away soon. And I say, oh, well, that's fantastic, where are you going? And he says, I'm moving to Belize. And I'm like, oh my God, you're making your American dream come true of leaving America, good for you. And he says, yeah, uh, I've been going there scuba diving for years, I love it. I'm just gonna like go there and just float in the ocean. And I'm like, that is amazing. Earlier he had mentioned that he lived with uh, his dog and his girlfriend. And I was like, oh, are they gonna go with you to Belize? And then he got real quiet again. And like I'd said something really wrong. And he says, oh, they're not coming with me. I'm kind of like, mm, okay, this is weird. It's real quiet. And then he just blurts out, I have terminal cancer and I only have six months to live. And I kind of don't like know how to respond and he can see me flustered and he immediately starts kind of like spinning out. Like he starts apologizing. He explains to me that, you know, he's been having to tell family members and friends this information for months and people have cried and screamed and he feels like over and over again he has to comfort them. And he said it was so nice in this moment to tell you a total stranger and be okay about it. But he starts to apologize and he's kind of getting tears in his eyes about it and I want to calm him down so finally I just blurt, it's okay, I'm a storyteller. At which point like the ghost of myself exits the front of my body, walks around and kicks my own ass. Like he just basically confronted me with his mortality and I was like, I have a hobby. And then I freak out. Oh my God, I mean, I'm so sorry that you're dying. I mean, not that you're dying. I mean, hey, 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 no, no, no. It's okay. Telling you this, my experience, my story, what I'm going through, was really wonderful to say this to a stranger. And I honestly think the world would probably be a much better place if everyone told each other their stories. And I said, yeah, I agree. And we stood there for a minute and uh, made some small talk. And then he finally said, well, I've got to go. And I said, okay, well, take care. And he opened his arms and he hugged me. And then I said, goodbye. Like, goodbye, you know. We turned around, we walked opposite directions. And literally, I probably wasn't 10 seconds away from him when I burst into tears, just like, Ugh! And I remember my little dog being like, what? You know, because animals, they don't get immense, like, sobbing. They're like, what's happening? Do you want to play? I get upstairs to my apartment, and my boyfriend is there, and he's like, Davey, what happened? And I'm like, well, I just was, like, walking down the street. I looked at this guy, so we started talking because of our dogs, and he said he's going to die of cancer. And he's like, calm down. The next day, I woke up, and I, I couldn't stop thinking about him. I did what you do in you know, the 2000s when you meet someone uh, with a terminal disease. I befriended him on Facebook and I sent him a little message. I just said, hey, it was nice meeting you. And over the next six months, I watched his Facebook page and I literally saw his experience in Belize just through images that changed in his profile pic and his banner pic. I saw beautiful trees uh, swaying on the beach. I saw uh, these sort of underwater pictures of this beautiful like azure ocean. I saw like stingrays and starfish. And after about six months, the picture just stopped updating. And I knew what had more than likely happened is that Kevin had, had passed away. Now, during this time, uh, I had actually been really sick too. Uh, I had, had Crohn's disease and I got down to like 117 pounds. I had been in a bad place, um, but my life had started to change. I was feeling healthier and I was really, really hitting storytelling hard. And I started teaching storytelling. I would use the story of meeting Kevin as a way to tell students or people I was coaching or directing about the importance of sharing their stories. You know, people would be working on stories about domestic abuse or really personal loss. And when they would doubt it, 
I would oftentimes share this anecdote about Kevin. It was probably about two, two and a half years after I'd met Kevin when one day I was on Facebook and you know, Facebook had just done that thing where they redesigned the interface and it made you feel like a senior citizen, like where are my old messages? Like banging and stuff. And I finally found this thing I didn't know was there. It was like a sub trash folder under a like spam. Kevin had sent me a message uh, the night that we met. And all it said was, it was so nice talking to you. I'd love to continue this friendship. Here's my number. And I immediately burst into tears. And I was so angry. I was so frustrated thinking, how did I like miss this chance to maintain this friendship? And I put Charlie on a leash and I went for a walk. And I was probably halfway down the block when I saw a neighbor of ours. And uh, she could tell I was upset. And she's like, what's wrong? And I was like, Ah, well, you know, about two, two and a half years ago, I met this guy on the street with cancer, and as I'm telling her the story, her face shifts. And she says, oh, are you talking about Kevin, that jerk? She tells me the story of Kevin, a man who had subletted her apartment uh, with his girlfriend and their dog a couple years earlier. Him and his girlfriend uh, were going to part ways. He was gonna go to Belize. He was gonna get her kind of settled and then she was gonna go and move west. Kevin was gonna put her stuff in storage. Anyway, he went to Belize and when she came to the storage unit and the apartment, it was all empty because Kevin had sold all of her stuff to feed his crystal meth addiction. Kevin uh, did not have terminal cancer. He was a drug addict. Uh, I don't know how he developed this lie. I did find out that I was one of many people in the neighborhood who had met Kevin one night and held him while he cried uh, and they cried. Maybe he was so caught up in his addiction and the lies around it and the money he owed people and the jobs he'd lost. Maybe one night he just tried it out. You know, he just wanted to see what is it like to say I'm dying and someone held him and hugged him and it felt good. And I come away from this conversation and I'm so angry and I go upstairs back to the computer and I sit down and I look and Kevin has sent me a message on Facebook and it just said hey what's up I click on Kevin's profile Kevin moved back to New York he's a foodie there's pictures of him like eating chocolate cheesecake hashtag yummy I am just like in a rage like the sadness that I had felt down on the street talking to this woman became this kind of like Aah! Like as I look at this, like who the hell does this guy think he is? But then the thing that really hits me is like, not so much that he betrayed me, but I told the story of him to people who I was teaching. And when I think about having used this story to do that, I'm just like, I spread this like figurative cancer, ironically, do you know what I mean? Like I use the story of this dude to impart the importance of truth to people. And it was just a flat out, lie. It made me think about the importance of stories and why we tell them. I think meeting Kevin served a purpose in my life and even though the story that Kevin told me was a lie, the way that it made me feel wasn't.